each time while being frozen inside a block of ice for seven days without food, water, or rest. But how did he get in there? Let's take a look. Eight days ago, 45 slabs of ice, 300 pounds each, are painstakingly cut and stacked by master ice sculptors to form a bone-chilling chamber. This will be the magician's home for the next week. He's been preparing for this stunt for months using yoga techniques to slow his breathing and heart rate. And he's tried to acclimate his body to cold temperatures. Let's hope he's got enough practice. The surface is treated with a coating of dry ice to bring its temperature down below freezing and to ensure that the chamber won't melt too quickly. 24 hours later, looks like we're ready to go. It's the first day, and the magician examines the fate that awaits him. Will he back out? It's too late to think about that now. The world is watching to see if he makes it, and then find out how he pulled it off. He climbs up to examine his icy tomb. Check out that black wire on the chamber. It's connected to a tiny camera that has been frozen into the ice. This view will show us the inside of the cube at all times. Time to close up shop. A quick sip of hot coffee. This will be the last liquid he'll drink for a week. An assistant connects a cable to a wire in the magician's sleeve. This wire runs through his clothing to monitors on his body so we'll know if something goes wrong. The heart rate readings are normal, but that will change. You can bet on it. It's now or never. The massive front slab is slowly pushed into place. Again, this is a very perilous illusion. Between the freezing temperatures and the crushing weight of the ice, the magician's life is in real danger. Do not attempt anything like this at home. The ice chamber is sealed shut. The workers quickly pack the gaps with more slabs and more dry ice. The dry ice fuses all the pieces to form one giant cube. Since the walls of the chamber are two feet thick, there's no quick way out in the event of an emergency. In order to free the magician, workers will have to carefully cut a hole in the side of the cube. It's getting cold in there, but he'll have to get used to it. There's a week to go, and he's just getting started. It's the second day and much colder in the chamber than expected. The magician's body temperature has dropped to 90 degrees. Doctors are concerned that if his temperature drops another 5 degrees, hypothermia will set in, and he could suffer from blood clots and possibly a stroke. Another layer of dry ice is added, and the temperature inside the cube drastically decreases. On day three, the cold is unbearable. The ice is frozen over, but we can still keep track of the magician's vital signs. His resting heart rate appears normal despite the frigid temperature. So far, so good. We'll just have to hope that he can survive. Day four, the ice is starting to melt. If the chamber becomes too soft, the magician will be in danger of being crushed under 13,000 pounds. Day five, the ice has refrozen. Even though the surface of the chamber is almost completely frosted over, we can see the magician on the TV monitor. Looks like he's still breathing. It's now day six, and the magician is being pushed to his limits. But there's still 24 hours to go. He's so worn out, he's fighting the urge to fall asleep on his feet. Today is day seven, and now it's time to free the magician before the ice chamber becomes an ice coffin. Will the magician make it out alive? And how will he do it? Find out the secrets when Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed returns. It's day seven and the moment of truth has arrived. Time to free the magician from his icy tomb. A chainsaw is needed to cut a hole through the ice, which is two feet thick. 
Let's see if the magician can hold on for just a few more seconds. There he is, still moving, but even with a mask, I can tell that he's near collapse. They better get him out of there. The crew is careful not to make the hole too big or the entire ice chamber will collapse under the magician, killing him instantly. From the look of him, he's already half dead. Well, black is appropriate for funerals. He could be dressed for the right occasion. The effects of the freezing temperature have taken their toll. By now, he's close to hypothermia, or at the very least, a severe case of frostbite, not to mention dehydration and exhaustion. At this point, he needs help just standing up. Although it's possible that the magician put himself into a zen-like trance, no amount of concentration in the world could protect him from the cold. Even if he survives his ordeal, what permanent damage he may have caused to his system is anyone's guess. Between the lack of food and drink and the absence of fresh air, his body has taken a severe beating. Remember the Ice Age killed off the dinosaurs. What chance does a magician have? Unless he knows something that we don't. A team of doctors is on alert to provide immediate treatment. He looks like he'll need all the help he can get. The assistants are standing by, ready to take him to an ambulance that's waiting outside. They better hurry. He looks worse than we expected. Let's hope it's a slow night in the emergency room. Or will he be going straight to the morgue? I guess we'll soon find out. And there he goes. But how could anyone survive being frozen in this chamber? You should know by now that it's all just one big trick. The magician is sealed inside the ice chamber, and we are led to believe that he's facing bone-chilling Arctic conditions. He's not. In fact, your refrigerator is probably colder. As you can see, it's a mild 53 degrees inside. But even though it's not as cold as he pretends, how could anyone survive confined in ice with no food, water, or sleep for days on end? The magician will never have to find out, because conveniently there's a trap door built into the floor of the chamber. Back outside, the workers obscure our view for a moment, and that's when the magician pulls the old switcheroo. The secret door opens, a body double climbs in, and for a few seconds, there are two magicians sealed inside. Watch again, this time from both inside and out. Without the distraction of the dry ice, the entrance of the body double is obvious. The magician and his double are careful to stand close together, so it appears that nothing unusual is going on inside the ice chamber. But we know better. Then the magician drops down through the floor and the trap door closes. Another open and shut case. Once he's out, the magician makes his way to a small compartment that's hidden in the platform. Inside the compartment are all the comforts of home, a bed, food and drink, even a television to watch the live news reports covering his frozen in a block of ice trick, supposedly taking place on the platform above him. Over the next seven days, the magician and his body double will take turns standing in the ice and chilling out in the room below. But if the magician is no longer frozen in the chamber, whose vital signs are being monitored? As you can see, the assistant is doing more than watching the screen. See that gadget on her finger? It's really her heartbeat that's going pitter-patter. And there's another bit of electronic deception going on here. When the magician is replaced by his body double, a videotape of the real magician is being played back on the screen, fooling innocent passers-by. I thought they banned the instant replay. Finally, on day seven, a wide awake and refreshed magician